Measuring Distances in Space Measuring distances to objects in space is an incredibly difficult thing to do for a number of reasons. The first one being that they're incredibly far away. The second reason is that you can't actually get to those objects to see how far they are away. So those distances need to be measured from here on Earth. And to do that we use things called telescopes. Telescopes are devices that allow us to look at the light that is emitted from stars, galaxies and other objects in space. In the past we've only been able to use telescopes that are on the ground and these telescopes have a number of limitations that prevent them from being really accurate. When telescopes on the ground receive light it's been affected by the atmosphere. As the light passes through the atmosphere it gets refracted. That means it gets deflected slightly and changes direction. That means that the telescope isn't seeing the light as it was originally emitted by the star. However, in recent years we've been able to put telescopes in space. That removes this problem, so the light doesn't get affected by the gases in the atmosphere. The other benefit of having telescopes in space is that those telescopes aren't subject to light pollution from buildings, towns, cities, etc. on the Earth. So telescopes in space receive light that's unaffected by the atmosphere and there's no light pollution to affect the image. Some people often have the misconception that these are more accurate telescopes because they're slightly closer to the stars that they're measuring distances to. That's not really correct. Although they are closer, that's not the biggest factor in their improved accuracy. The fact that they're unaffected by the atmosphere and there's no light pollution are the biggest factors in their improved precision and accuracy. We're now going to think about how we measure the distance to stars in space. Here we have the solar system with the sun at the centre and the Earth is about to orbit the sun. This is the star that we are trying to measure the distance to. Very far away we have some quite distant stars that we're going to use as a reference point. So what we do is we look out into the night sky from the Earth and we locate the star that we are trying to measure the distance to. And we work out which stars align with it. We then wait six months for the Earth to pass to the other side of the Sun and we do the same thing. So we look for the star we're trying to measure the distance to and line it up with some of our reference stars way off in the distance. You will notice that that results in the star appearing to shift its position in the sky. That's known as a parallax shift. Once you've done this you can then work out something called the parallax angle and that's related to how much the star appears to move by during the course of those six months as the Earth moves round the Sun. We're now going to think about a slightly closer star and how that would be different. So there's our second star. We're going to do the same thing. So we look out from the Earth, we see where the star is and align it with some of those reference stars. We do the same six months later you'll now notice that there is a larger parallax angle. The star has appeared to move by a much greater amount. The closer the star is to you, the larger the parallax angle is going to be, the more it appears to shift in the sky during the course of the year. The more distant the star is, the smaller that angle becomes, the smaller the amount of parallax. You can use the amount of parallax to determine exactly how far away the star is. So here we have three stars, one fairly close, one in the middle distance and one quite far away. So for the first star, the closest star to us, there's going to be quite a large parallax shift during the course of the year. Okay, that distance there. For the second star, that parallax shift is going to be smaller because it's further away. For the third star, the most far away, the parallax shift is tiny, very small you can work out the size of that parallax shift and then determine the distance that star is away from you. We're now going to take a view from the Earth. So this is the star we're trying to measure the distance to and all the other stars on the screen are those really distant ones that we're going to use as a reference point. During the course of the year that star will appear to move across the sky as the Earth rotates around the Sun. So six months later that star will have undergone a parallax shift and will have moved across the sky. If the star is closer to the Earth, then that distance is going to be quite large. If the star is further away, the distance it's going to shift is quite small. 
These really distant stars don't appear to move because they're so far away the parallax shift is imperceptible. The second method we're going to look at is the brightness method. So the closer the star is to you, the brighter it will appear to be. And as it gets further away, it will get dimmer and dimmer. So as the star is further away, it appears to be less bright in the sky. We will receive less light from it here on the Earth. So telescopes looking at the star will be able to detect how much light it's giving off and how much light is reaching us here on the Earth. And therefore, you can use that to calculate the distance it is away from us. However, there is a potential problem with this method. Not all stars in the sky are the same size. Some are larger, and therefore they're going to give out lots of light, and some are slightly smaller, so they give out less light. So this adds an element of uncertainty into the measurement of distance. We need to take into account the size of the star when we measure the distance using the brightness method. We can do that by looking at the colour of the star. That tells us roughly what size it's going to be, what temperature it is, and therefore how much light it's likely to be giving off. However, this is an estimate and an assumption, so therefore our result won't be as accurate as it could be. We're now going to make a quick comparison between those two different methods. So the parallax method is able to measure the distances to nearby stars only. The angle is too small to be able to measure the distance to far away stars. However, the brightness method can measure distances to any star, no matter how far it is away. With the parallax method, we use distant stars as reference points. We assume that the stars that are really far away have no parallax angle at all. However, they probably have a very tiny amount, so that adds a little bit of uncertainty to our measurement, the addition of some inaccuracy. The brightness method assumes that the light the star gives out is exactly the same as other stars that are the same colour. That's going to lead to some uncertainty in my measurement and some inaccuracy.